JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 6th. I am Harold Ambospissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar rebounded and outperformed all the other major all the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday, gaining the most versus AUD, NZD, and GBP. Now, this uh, the fact that the US dollar uh, strengthened, combined with the fact that the risk-linked uh, Aussie Kiwi were the main losers, suggests that the market sentiment deteriorated again at some point yesterday or today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, all but one of uh, the major European indices under our radar closed in the red with risk aversion intensifying during the US session and rolling into the Asian trading today. Only Japan's Nikkei 225 uh, traded uh, in the green. Now, with no clear event to trigger a flight to safety, we will stick to our guns that market participants still saw the Fed as the most hoggish central bank, even after Fed Chair Jerome Powell put cold water on the idea of raising interest rates by uh, 75 basis points at the next gathering. Remember that even before the gathering, we saw these chances for an aftermath rebound uh, in case the greenback came under selling interest due to a disappointment. The reason was that even with 50 basis points increments, the Fed would still be among the most hoggish major central banks. However, market participants did not stay, did not stay convinced that the Fed will hike by 50 basis points up at the upcoming gathering and brought back to the table bets with regards to a triple hike. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, they now assign an 87% probability for such a move, a bigger percentage than even that of, uh, of uh, prior to Wednesday's decision. So, with such aggressive expectations over the Fed's future course of action, we expect the US dollar to continue its prevailing uptrend, especially against uh, currencies, uh, the central banks of which are expected to proceed at a slower pace. Now, besides investors bringing uh, back to the table their triple hike uh, bets, we also had a Bank of England gathering yesterday. The bank decided to hike interest rates by 25 basis points as was widely anticipated, but in contrast to expectations of a descender calling for no change, there were actually three policymakers favoring a 50 basis point increase. And yet the pound fell. Why? because of the bank's warnings over, a recession, over uh, recession risks. In the inflation report, the bank revised up its inflation, porca excuse me, its inflation forecasts, expecting consumer prices to peak above 10% in the last three months of the year, but downgraded its uh, GDP forecasts to show a contraction of 0.25% in 2023 from a previous estimate of 1.25% growth. It also cut its projections for 2024 to 0.25% from 1%. In the meeting minutes, it was also revealed that two members argued that the guidance was too strong, uh, given the risks uh, to growth, meaning that they may be against further hikes for the next uh, few months. So in our view, all this suggests that the Bank of England may continue raising interest rates in order to bring inflation back down to target, but due to the recession risks, the pace may be much slower than, previous, uh, than, than previously anticipated. For now, 
the pound is likely to continue drifting lower, especially against the US dollar, but even against the euro, as there are still participants believing that uh, a July hike may be appropriate by the ECB. Now, today, investors are likely to turn their gaze to the employment reports for April from the US and Canada. Getting the ball rolling with the US, non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed somewhat to 380,000 from 431,000, but the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 3.5% from 3.6%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have increased at the same monthly pace as in March, but this will result in a down tick uh, to 5.5% uh, from 5.6% in, um, in the year-over-year -year rate. Now, we do see the case of such numbers adding more credits to the view of uh, more aggressive hikes by the Fed, despite a small slowdown in payrolls and wages. Why? Because uh, wages are still expected to, uh, to stay well above the Fed's objective of 2%, and because uh, with uh, a tightening labor market, a small slowdown, a minor slowdown to the NFPs appears more than normal to us. In other words, we expect the US dollar to stay in uptrend mode after the employment report as well. Now, flying to Canada, the employment rate is forecast to slide to 5.2% from 5.3%, and the net change in employment to show uh, to slow somewhat, excuse me, to 57.5 from 72.5 thousand. At its uh, latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points as was expected, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Governor Macklem specifically said, we need higher rates and the economy can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move Forceful, as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. Be careful here. The Bank of Canada hiked by 50 basis points, as several other major central banks have done, the RBNZ and the Fed on Wednesday, but the Canadian dollar at that day strengthened. Why? Because Macklem and his colleagues appeared hoggish, saying that they could act much more aggressively in the months to come. So although uh, the 50 basis points were priced in, we got an aggressive message that helped the Canadian dollar. So with that in mind, with the aggressive message, with the hoggish message in mind, and also taking into account that inflation after the, after the meeting, data showed that inflation accelerated by much more than expected in March, we believe that a decent employment report could add more support to the Canadian dollar especially against currencies, the central banks of which are expected to stay dovish and proceed in a much more cautious manner than the Bank of Canada in normalizing their policy. Uh, personally, I see the Bank of Canada as the second most uh, hoggish uh, central bank among, among the major ones. First, uh, I see the Fed and then the Bank of Canada. So due to the and this is what I'm mentioning here, that uh, due to aggressive expectations surrounding the Fed, we don't expect the loony to, to outperform the US dollar. We believe that there is some more upside to uh, USD cut, but against, uh, against other currencies like the Euro, the Yen, we believe that uh, the Canadian dollar could, uh, could perform better. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT just fair and direct.